Well, happy Tuesday, everybody, and a happy Halloween. I uh, hope you've bought some candy to give away or to eat whatever makes you happy. We don't get many trick-or-treaters at our house, even some years none, because we live out in the country. But always make sure we have some Three Musketeers and some Kit Kats so I can eat them when nobody comes to get them. Happy Halloween. All right, today we are in Psalm 83. Psalm 83. And this this psalm uh, expresses how I think uh, we all feel at times, but it also expresses how I sometimes pray. Let me let me explain. Um, in Psalm 83, makes it clear that, you know, Israel was God's special people. Today, uh, those who are followers of Christ, those of us who are his disciples, believers in Jesus, we are God's special people. Look at verse 3. He says, They make shrewd plans against your people and conspire together against your treasured ones. So when this was written, probably somewhere around 700 uh, B.C., maybe in the 700s, into the early 600s B.C., so almost 3,000 years ago, when this was written, Israel, God's special people, his treasure today, his church, us, you, me, God's people, followers of Jesus. And I love the image that God calls us treasured ones, that we are like a treasure to him, valuable, valuable. Um. In, in Israel's day, 700 years before Christ, the surrounding nations uh, viewed Israel as an enemy. Not much has changed, has it? Uh, and wanted to destroy the nation of Israel. Again, not much has changed, has it? Look at verse 2. For behold, your enemies make an uproar, and those who hate you have exalted themselves. And then, verse 3 that we read a minute ago, they make true plans against your people, conspire together against your treasured ones. Talking about Israel in Psalm 83. They have said, come and let us wipe them out as a nation. Huh. Does that sound like today? Nothing has changed. Um, that the name of Israel be remembered no more. Verse five, for they have conspired together with one mind against you. They make a covenant. And then he goes on to list in the verses to follow some of the surrounding nations, including Assyria in verse eight. And one of the reasons we're able to date this to the you know, the late 700s, early 600s, is that's when Assyria was an empire. You'll remember it was 722 B.C. when Assyria destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel or Samaria. And so you had all of these nations, including the empire of Assyria, Assyria, Assyria that wanted to destroy uh, the, the, the nation of, of, of Israel, God's treasured uh, people. Not much has changed. And so the author of Psalm 83 prayed. And notice what he prayed in verse 1. O God, do not remain quiet and do not be silent. And O God, do not be still. God, don't let all this just happen. Get up and act. Do something. Verse 9. Deal with them, these nations that are wanting to destroy Israel. Deal with them. As with Midian. And then he lists some other nations from Israel's past her history that God uh, defeated when protecting Israel on the way to the promised land after being in the promised land. Verse 13, oh my God, make them like whirling dust, like chaff before the wind. You know, uh, there's just dust and wind blows. God destroy those nations. They just, wind blowing in, you know, dust blowing in the wind. Look at verses 16 and 17. Fill their faces with dishonor. God dis Allow things to happen that discredit them. Verse 17, let them be ashamed and dismayed forever and let them be humiliated and perish. God, judge these nations. And in the end, verse 18, so that they will know that you alone are the only God. Now, what does this have to do with us today? Well, aside from the fact that there are people who still want to destroy the nation of Israel, think about us as the people of God. There are people in America, there are, there are uh, uh, people who very intentionally 
want to silence the voice and the influence of God's people, of the church, of Christians, of, you know, especially if we believe the Bible. And if you want to call yourself a Christian and, and not believe the Bible, you want to call yourself a Christian and go along with whatever the culture says when it comes to sin and uh, and all that. You want, you want to call yourself a Christian, but live like the world and, and not be holy. World's fine. You call yourself whatever, whatever you want. They don't care, but they want, there, there are forces and there are institutions and there are movements and philosophies and groups and individuals today who want to silence the voice of Bible believing, God honoring disciples of Jesus. They want to silence our voice. They want to silence our influence. And there's even a small number who want to hurt us in ways much more severe than that. We are God's treasured one. We are Jesus' people. And we have enemies who, in a figurative or some cases literal way, want to destroy us. And we pray. God do something. I will confess that there are times when I have prayed for God to bring to an end certain nations that are evil. For God to bring to an end certain movements, philosophies, and even religions that are evil. That's how the author of this psalm prayed. And sometimes I pray for that. I think it's okay to pray for that. I pray for their salvation, but I pray for an end to the evil of certain nations and certain groups. And I would encourage you to do so. By the way, I mentioned this was written about 2,700 years ago. Think about this. 2,700 years ago, God's people had an enemy. Guess what? God still exists. <laughs> God still has a people, and God is still working, and his enemies will never change that. So you do not, you do not live in fear because God will always be God, and God will always have a people no matter how much his enemies rage and scheme and kill. They cannot stop God or his kingdom. To his name be the glory. I'll see you tomorrow as we look at Psalm 84.